What is the trade-off for this aero comfort benefit? If you have hip arthritis, stiffness or restriction, like I do, then riding with shorter cranks has great immediate appeal. This will allow me to either have a more open hip angle at the top of the pedal stroke, which will help to reduce hip impingement pain, or alternatively, I can lower my handlebars to get into a slightly more aerodynamic position while maintaining the same hip angle. Excellent. But what is the trade-off for this aero comfort benefit? Is there a trade-off? I learned about the performance benefits of using shorter cranks in 2018 at a cycling science conference I attended in Germany. But really, I just parked that information in the back of my mind until now. In a quest to deal with my own progressive hip osteoarthritis and to stave off the looming spectre of bilateral hip replacements, I've decided to find out about using shorter cranks for myself. Besides changing the hip angle, riding with shorter cranks appears to have additional benefits. Slower hip and knee joint extension at the same cadence, allowing increased force production by the leg muscles. Maintained metabolic efficiency. Mechanical advantage as more of the pedal stroke happens near full knee extension. And improved, yes, improved, power production. I have two bikes with similar frame geometry. I have a Trek Amonda 62 centimetre frame and I have a specialised Tarmac 61 centimetre frame. Until the start of this year, both bike frames had 175 millimetre cranks, but a few weeks ago, I installed 160 millimetre cranks on my specialised Tarmac. And now I'm ready to run some comparative tests. So after the first video that I did on this topic a few weeks ago, I had a number of suggestions about what data to look at. My first test was to do an indoor ride in ergo mode at a set power level and compare the heart rate differences between the two crank lengths. I've started with a short 30 minute test on my Wahoo indoor trainer with the power level set at 280 watts, which is a solid level for me, but still below my FTP. I used my Amonda with the 175 millimeter cranks on one day, then repeated the test with the Tarmac with the 160 millimeter cranks at the same time on the following day. I tried to keep conditions similar between the two tests. Both were done in the afternoon and both were done with a five minute warm up at 100 watts. What do you think the difference was? I can see by looking at my Strava analysis that potentially my heart rate rose a little quicker when using the Tarmac with the shorter 160 millimeter cranks. But overall, Strava tells me that my heart rate was actually one beat per minute less on average uh, riding on the Tarmac with the shorter 160 mil cranks versus riding on my Amonda with the longer 175 millimeter cranks. So no doubt this difference is not statistically significant, but I think it's a really great result because what it shows is on a short steady state ride, there is no increased exertion when you're using the shorter cranks. In other words, there is no trade-off for using shorter cranks in terms of heart rate. I'm pretty pleased to see this. Now I know that this little 30 minute ride is not really indicative of how most cyclists would train or race. However, it is a starting point. Yes, I plan to do some longer comparison rides and I will post the results of those tests in the coming weeks. I've also got some interesting ideas for max sprint power output on the flat and also max power output on a steep uphill climb to look at as well. So far, I think the data and the feel of using the shorter cranks is very encouraging and I'm looking forward to finding out more and sharing with you.